Now I'd like to do what I mentioned we were going to do now, um, which is do some examples that where it's a little bit more difficult to determine the priorities. Some examples that raise uh, one or two new issues we haven't seen before. So try to pause the video and determine the configuration of this stereo center, but don't be surprised if you have trouble because this problem does raise an issue that we haven't talked about before. Here's the stereo center. We can mark it with an asterisk. Let's put dots for the directly connected atoms. We have a four-way tie, four carbons. Let's list what each of those four carbons is attached to. Well, this carbon is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. Okay, now I'd like to pause here and bring something up that I don't think I mentioned before. Actually, I think I did mention this once before uh, quite a bit earlier in the series of videos. Um, so one thing we've already pointed out a little bit is whenever you make your list of atoms that are um, connected to the dotted atom, there's always three atoms in the list. There's three atoms in this list, which means that we're not counting, we're not going backwards, back along the path towards the stereo center. So when I made the list of the three atoms that this carbon was attached to, I only listed the atoms further out from the stereo center. This carbon's attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. We didn't count this carbon back here, because that would be going back towards the stereo center, and that's just not the way the method worked. If we also counted this carbon back here, we'd end up with a list of four atoms, and that's not the way we're supposed to do it. So again, in order to get our list of three atoms, when we make our list of atoms, we should only be listing the atoms that are further out from the stereo center. We should not be going back towards the stereo center or recounting the stereo center itself. Now actually, I, I believe I mentioned this um, earlier in the series of videos, and I might have briefly mentioned that there actually is an important exception to that. There's one case where you do need to move backwards towards the stereo center, and we're going to see that later on as we're working on this very problem. Now what are the three atoms that this carbon is attached to? What's well, attached to this carbon and two hydrogens? And as usual, of course, we don't go backwards and count the stereo center. This carbon is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. And this carbon is also attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. So we continue to have a four-way tie. We continue to be tied. So now we have to move all these dots one atom further out. We'll erase this dot and put a new dot in over here. So now we can erase this list. We'll erase this dot and put in a new dot. So we'll erase this list. We'll erase this dot and put in a new dot. So we erase this list. We erase this dot and put in a new dot and we erase this list. Very important on a complicated problem like this um, to be meticulous in your notation. If you have to move further out from the stereo center, move your dots out, erase your old dots, and erase your old lists. Otherwise, our works can get very confusing. Now, uh, what are the three atoms that this carbon is attached to? Well, this carbon is attached to three methyl groups. So it's attached to three carbons. I hope that you can understand this condensed notation and see that this carbon is attached to three methyl groups, which means three separate carbons. If that's not clear to you, you should always write out the condensed notation. Anytime condensed notation becomes confusing, you should write it out. So if this was at all confusing to you, you should erase this way of writing it. And write it like this instead. Obviously, I'm not trying to show the geometry around this carbon. I'm just trying to show what it's connected to. And now, if it wasn't clear before, you can see that this dotted carbon is definitely bonded to three separate carbons. And now, again, we should not count this carbon back here, because that would be a fourth atom. We only want three atoms, and as I mentioned before, we're not supposed to go backwards back towards the stereo center. When we're listing the three atoms that this carbon is attached to, we list these atoms out here that are further from the stereo center than the dotted atom. We don't go backwards, back along the path towards the stereo center, and recount this carbon. That's not the way the method works. Well, the three atoms that this carbon is attached to is double bonded to this carbon. We know that we count that as two separate carbons, so that we'll get three atoms in the list, and it's also attached to this hydrogen. This carbon is double bonded to a carbon, and it's got a hydrogen, so carbon, carbon, hydrogen. And up here we have a carbon that's triple bonded to a carbon, and we know we treat that as three separate carbons. 
And as usual, we should not go backwards back along the path towards the stereo center and count this carbon. We don't count that. That's not the way the method works. We only count these carbons out here further away from the stereo center. And we count them as three because we have a triple bond. Well, now we can start to break some of the ties. We can see that the two groups on the right are going to beat the two groups on the left. On the right, we have carbon, 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 carbon. So the third atom in this list is a carbon. That's tied with the third atom in this list, but that beats the third atom in this list and this list, which is a hydrogen. So on the right, we're going to have the number one and two, and on the left, we're going to have the three and the four priorities. So let's put these uh, groups off to the left. Let's put those off to the side for a while. Let's not worry about those. Let's just focus on these groups on the right. So now I'm going to have to erase this dot and move the dot further out. Of course, it doesn't matter which of these methyl groups I put the dot on, because the methyl groups are all identical. So I'm just going to put the dot up here, since it doesn't matter which methyl group I put it on. Let's erase our previous work. And I can erase this dot and again move one step further out and then erase this work. Now, what are the three atoms that this carbon is attached to? Now we have kind of a difficulty, because if we just keep going further out from the stereo center, it seems like there's only going to be one thing that it's attached to, just the hydrogen. How are we going to get three atoms if we can only move outwards from the stereo center? Well, this is that exception that I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. This is the one case where we have to go backwards along the path, back towards the stereo center. We know we have to do that because otherwise we couldn't get our three atoms in the list. Um, so what's the rule? How do you know when you should go backwards and recount something that's closer to the stereo center and when you shouldn't? The rule is you should never go backwards along sigma bonds, but you always need to go backwards along pi bonds. Never go back along sigma bonds, always go back along pi bonds. Never go back along sigma bonds, always go back along pi bonds. Uh, I hope that you're familiar enough with sigma and pi bonds that you can see when we have a triple bond, you should know that one of the bonds is a sigma and the other two are pi's. And that when you have a double bond, one of the bonds is a sigma and the other one is a pi bond. Well, here we have a triple bond. That means that two of the bonds, maybe these top two, are pi bonds. Well, we're supposed to go back along the pi bonds, according to this new rule that we just learned. So going back along this pi bond, we should recount this carbon. Even though this carbon is closer to the stereo center than the dotted atom, it's okay to go back and count it again because we're going back along a pi bond. This is when we're supposed to go back closer to the stereo center. And since this is a triple bond, there's another pi bond. So we should go backwards along that pi bond too, and again we should count this carbon. However, we don't go back along the sigma bond. We know that one of the bonds in a triple bond is a sigma bond. You never go back along sigma bonds, so we should not count this carbon a third time. We should not go along the sigma bond and count this a third time. Well, we don't need to because we can still count this hydrogen out here, and now you can see we've got back to what we always want to get, a list of three atoms that's connected to the dotted atom. So now you can see why we have to have this rule that you should go back along pi bonds, because if you didn't, you wouldn't be able to get the list of three atoms that's connected to the dotted atom. Let me repeat all that one more time. When we are listing the three atoms that are connected to a dotted atom, um, we are normally not supposed to list the atoms that are closer to the stereo center than the dotted atom. Uh, however, sometimes you do. The rule is um, that when you're listing the three atoms that are connected to the dotted atom, you do go backwards, back closer to the stereo center along any pi bonds but you should not go backwards back towards the stereo center along any sigma bonds. So we went back along this pi bond to count this carbon, back along this pi bond to count this carbon again, but we didn't go back along the sigma bond. We just counted this hydrogen here. Now how about this carbon over here? What are the three things it's attached to? Well, three hydrogens. Should we go backwards, backwards closer to the stereo center and count this carbon? Absolutely not, because this is connected by a sigma bond. You never go backwards along sigma bonds. And we don't need to anyway, because we've already got a list of three atoms. Well, now it's easy to break the tie. The first point of difference is between this carbon, the first atom in the list, and the first atom in this list. So on the wedge, we have our number one priority. And down here in the bottom right, we have the number two priority. Now let's erase the work that we used to get that. 